Welcome to my Logitech G Pro X Superlight review. This is a mouse I'm very excited for because the previous G Pro wireless really catapulted Logitech back to the top of one of the best manufacturers of gaming mice, and the Superlight aims to improve on what many thought was already gaming mouse perfection. At the Star Ladder CSGO Major in the Grand Finals, 6 out of 10 players were using the Superlight. Normally, it's Zowie dominating in these events, and that's because they have so many shapes available. But the Superlight is just one model and one shape, and still over half the players in the final were using it. So does the Superlight exceed my overly high expectations? Well, I could spoil it right now and tell you, but boy am I going to make you work to understand my opinion. This whole review will be told in riddles. Turns out I'm not smart enough to do riddles, so I'll just standardise the rest. Let's start off with the specifications. But first, this is the G Pro X Superlight. This is the G Pro Wireless. This is the G Pro. I thought I owned one, but I must have sold it at one point. Anyway, when I say the G Pro in this review, I mean the wireless version, always a wireless version. Ignore the wired one, it doesn't exist. So this mouse is 125 millimeters long, 63.5 millimeters wide, and 40 millimeters tall, and it weighs just 63 grams. The mouse is using Logitech's Lightspeed technology to deliver flawless wireless performance and also features the Hero sensor which provides highest performance and power efficiency. Put it simply, science and engineering equals good reliable technology. You have 5 programmable buttons at a max polling rate of 1000Hz and a max DPI of 25600. I don't know why anybody would need a DPI this high. If you use such a DPI, leave a comment in the box below and explain yourself. The main headlining difference between the G Pro and the Super Light is, well, the super lightweight. As said, coming in at just 63 grams, this is one of the lightest mice that I have used. I can only assume they've pulled it off using witchcraft in all honesty. It doesn't even have a fragile feel to it either, and it's a lot of weight that has been shed from the previous 80 grams from the G Pro and it also doesn't have holes in it, so it's lost that weight without someone drilling into it as well. The shape remains the same as the old G Pro wireless, it's comfortable for every grip type I feel. I know many people using this or the G Pro wireless with various grip types and they've all felt comfortable with it. Personally as a palm grip squeezer man that holds onto the mouse like it's their mum's hand dropping them off at school, it doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart either. Another new feature as well is the 100% PTFE mouse feet, with the top one being a really nice chunky pad of PTFE as well. I like this a lot as it really helps maintain a uniform glide for the whole mouse and keeps it feeling nice and speedy. It still has the sensor ring as well to make sure it remains balanced and there's no chance of scraping. There is a lack of features though, especially compared to the G Pro, and one of those things is the cutting of the DPI button. But as this is just a brief feature run through, I'm going to keep you waiting on whether or not I like or hate this change. But it's also a lack of interchangeable side buttons that the G Pro Wireless had. And I kind of like those, you could utilise or have an extra button on the right for a separate binding if you wanted, or just remove them like I did and have nothing. It's probably been removed for the weight, but really I just like the choice to have or not have them. And there's also something else lacking, 16.8 million features are lacking as there's no light zones at all so no RGB logo. No longer can you have that logo sync with other peripherals on your desk, it's unfortunately become a bit dimmer in your gaming room. Even the battery indicator hasn't escaped with it just being one instead of the normal three. Sacrifices are being made at every point to make sure it hits that weight target. All the buttons are pretty much the same as the G Pro. They are all absolutely great and I'd say flawless. The side buttons look small but they're really easy to use by a roll of thumb which is what I prefer. The scroll wheel is also excellent. Great notches so when you're scrolling it feels really solid and the click as well feels great and consistent. The battery life is also great. It lasts around 70 hours with constant motion. There's no Bluetooth for non-gaming and 2.4 GHz for gaming like you might find in other mice. This is just all gaming all the time. You get a USB-A cable which is designed like this so it stays in place when gaming. You can use other USB-A cables as well to charge the mouse so don't worry, your other ones aren't useless, they might just disconnect when playing, that's all. The USB dongle does get a home button on the side of the mouse, you just need to push in the bottom and take off the cover and pop in your USB dongle for safekeeping. And it's kept in place with magnets. You know what, I'll talk about the software and the DPI button now because it pairs together. The software is the G-Hub, it's fine, it's filled with features being able to change buttons, DPI and polling rate, you can also rebind buttons to work with various programs and stuff. Couldn't ask for more, but I feel like as there is no DPI button on this mouse, this software is kind of forcing you as there's no easy way of changing DPIs anymore. I personally am against this stuff, so I'm just pointing it out that it's something that I don't agree with unless it can be avoided. 
The lack of DPI button might have been a choice to really free up as much weight as possible though. It's not all bad as there is onboard memory so you can make the changes and uninstall the software if you want to. So overall the downside is no DPI button and USB type A cable I guess. The only reason why USB type A is a bad thing is because well it's a bit outdated now. It also doesn't draw as much power as a USB-C so it could have charged faster as well. I think this one on a charge maybe takes about 30 minutes to an hour to charge fully at least in my experience. All of the other wireless mice that I have are USB Type-C compatible, even Ninjutsu which is a newer manufacturer and their mouse is only 65 grams so it can be done. Unless there's a reason for them to go for USB-A for weight purposes, maybe because they've already made the shape, but who knows. The good parts about this mouse is um, everything else. That's really it. I love this mouse, it's great, it has high levels of consistency across the board just like the original G Pro wireless, but it's lighter. The shape is great and I feel like it has a sweet spot of feeling really good for many grip types. The in-game performance is superb, this might be a mouse that when you use it you actually feel like you're playing better as a result, as this is such a huge step up in terms of most other mice that I have used. So I can honestly recommend this mouse, it is a bit pricey at roughly $149 or £129 or €149. Euros at the time of recording this but this is one of the mice where I feel like you're getting what you pay for and that is a mouse that is pretty much perfect. And this is more of an anecdotal experience than anything else but in my time of using Logitech over the years their warranty process has been really good and hassle free. You do get two years warranty so when you slap down the cash you know it's going to be covered by them for two years from any defects which is a plus with something that's cost such a big chunk of money. Now is this worth moving to if you have the previous G Pro wireless model? This is a tough question. The old one is 80 grams so it's not even heavy, it's in a reasonable weight and it has more features like being able to add extra side buttons and a DPI toggle. Honesty is something that I always go for in my reviews so I'm going to say no. If you have a G Pro wireless and it's fine as it is now, moving to the super light isn't a must. Perfecting perfection is hard. They have made improvements but the improvements aren't massive in the grand scheme of things. For example, you can just buy 100% PTFE mouse feet for your G Pro wireless anyway and then you're only really missing the weight difference. However, if you are moving from any other mouse, I'd honestly say definitely get it. As mentioned, this is one of the few mice where I feel that when you start using it, you actually feel like you're going to play better. And I'm not lying when I say it. One final thing, Logitech say that this mouse is a fully carbon neutral product. Well done, I'll give you a pat on the back of the mouse for that guys. 